26, Murray State University racer football team began the season under the huge shadow cast from last year's undefeated squad. Many fans questioned if this year's team could compete with that same intensity, the same drive, the same desire that had brought an OVC championship to Murray. Head coach Houston Nutt and his staff also had similar thoughts. But the one thing they knew was that at the core of this year's team was a group of very special seniors. This group of young men came to Murray three years ago with the promise of better days ahead for the beleaguered program. But before they could reach that goal, they had to go through a baptism of fire. As true freshmen, they saw more playing time than most seasoned veterans. But that experience, along with some key transfers, built them into a championship caliber team that ran roughshod over the entire conference in their junior year. As seniors, they were out to prove that last season's championship was not a fluke. Their first test came on September 7th against interstate rival Western Kentucky. The Hilltoppers featured a high-octane option offense that put the racer defense to the test. Murray countered with its own high-flying assault. The two teams slugged it out in front of the Murray State home crowd. When one team seemed to be in control, the other would come storming back. When time ran out in regulation, the game was tied and sent into overtime. Western's option prevailed in OT, and the Hilltoppers escaped with the win. Although the loss was bitter, it also served as a catalyst. This year's team no longer had to live up to last year's undefeated squad. Instead, they could concentrate on who they were. The following week, the 1996 racer football team started showing their hometown fans what they were all about. In the first half against Southern Illinois, the racer defense held the Salukis to just seven points. And on the other side of the ball, the combination of Mike Cherry to Reginald Swinton hooked up for 18 points, while Great Britain transplant Rob Hart tacked on 12. With their first victory safely tucked away, the next challenge was on the road. At Southeast Missouri, the racer defense sent a resounding message to the rest of the conference as they shut out the Indians 16-zip. Elliott Dunn led all players with nine total tackles, one for a 10-yard loss. In fact, Simo never had a drive longer than 45 yards and was 3 for 15 in third down conversions. Returning home, Murray faced a Middle Tennessee State team with revenge on its mind. The previous year, the Racers had broken the Blue Raiders' spell and crushed them in front of the home crowd. Middle was determined to make amends. But determination will only carry a team so far when playing a superior team. The racer defense was still on a high from the previous week's shutout. Early first quarter score before slamming the door. Offensively, Murray combined a steady stream of running plays with big time passes like this one. When the final horn had blown, the racers were once again victorious. After feasting on Austin P for homecoming and then struggling to win against UT Martin, the stage was set for Murray to take on a new OVC rival and fellow top 10 team, Eastern Illinois. The Panthers and the Racers had played each other many times in the past, but this was the first time they took the field with one common goal, OVC dominance. EIU was playing before a capacity homecoming crowd, but Murray had brought along more than just a few of their fans too. Whether you were cheering for the Racers or the Panthers, most agreed it was one of the most exciting games they had ever witnessed. MSU took the early lead after a cherry to Jones 31-yard pass set up a two-yard dive by Anthony Downs. After scoring another touchdown, the Panthers roared back to tie the game. A 52-yard field goal by Rob Hart put Murray back on top, only to have EIU score again. It continued this way all afternoon. One team scored, and the other answered. With less than five minutes remaining in the game, the Racers were down by seven and sitting on their own three-yard line. The chances of a Murray State win seemed slim. But slim was all they needed. On the first play, Mike Cherry hit Swinton for a 10-yard gain, getting Murray out of a hole. Then two plays later, Cherry hit a fully extended Jesse Jones 
for a 42-yard gain that put Murray on the Panthers' 30-yard line. After a heart-stopping, mishandled snap, it was time for Reggie Swinton to do his thing. Running a deep route, he sold the Eastern Illinois cornerback on the post, forcing the DB inside. Then he cut outside and watched the ball float into his outstretched arms for a lead-changing touchdown. But the Panthers were not about to give up. They started their own drive, and they were at the MSU 24 when Eastern Illinois quarterback Mike Simpson decided to try his luck again against Renardo Hampton. But Renardo believed in making his own luck. So when Simpson tried to rifle the ball to his receiver in the end zone, Hampton calmly stepped in front and grabbed the ball, sealing the Panthers' fate. They did it. They met the challenge head on and walked away winners. All those early season doubts faded away like fog on a hot sunny day. An off week gave the team a chance to savor the victory and heal up old wounds because they knew that in three weeks they would have another test of character. Not that they were overlooking their next opponent, Tennessee Tech, not by a long shot. Instead, they pummeled the former conference power with an unrelenting offense and an unforgiving defense. The stage was now set for the game of the year. Last year, Murray State had wrestled away the conference crown from longtime champion Eastern Kentucky, and the Colonels were determined to take back what they felt was rightfully theirs. So in front of a Sports South regional television audience and over 10,000 fans, the battle for OVC supremacy began. Murray drew first blood with a 78-yard first quarter drive that ended with a cherry to Swinton 19-yard touchdown pass. Eastern immediately retaliated on its next series to tie the score at seven apiece. Then they pulled ahead by seven on the next possession. With time running out in the first half and wanting to swing the pendulum of momentum back to their side, the racers drove down to the Colonel four yard line when Mike Cherry looked to his other favorite target, Jesse Jones, and nailed him at the goal line for six points. Rob Hart's conversion sent the teams into the locker room at halftime, all knotted up at 14. The second half saw each team struggling to get a foothold offensively, only to have the other side's defense swap them down again and again. As a matter of fact, Eastern had the ball four times in Murray territory, twice in the red zone, only to have MSU's defense rise up and hold their ground. With the clock running down, the racers staged one last drive. With a mix of short, tight passes and hard-earned running plays, Murray found themselves on the Eastern 19-yard line with four seconds to play. Onto the field trotted Rob Hart, the Brit who could kick. On the previous series, his 37-yard field goal attempt got caught in the crosswind and sailed right of its mark. Now just one yard closer, and with the crosswind still howling, he lined up for the biggest kick of his life. As the ball was snapped, Hart stepped forward, and with a powerful swing of his foot, it connected. The ball rose into the air as every single set of eyes watched its flight. End over end, it tumbled until it finally reached the ground. As the official's arm shot skyward, racer players rushed onto the field. They had done it. They stared into the eyes of the beast on its home turf and didn't blink. They were once again the champions of the Ohio Valley Conference and once again destined for the NCAA playoffs. But before they could compete in the playoffs, they needed to settle some late season business. Tennessee State traveled to the friendly confines of Stewart Stadium, hoping that the big win over Eastern Kentucky had left the racers in a relaxed state of mind. Unfortunately for the Tigers, the same intensity that had burned so brightly at Richmond continued to ignite the racer players. As far as MSU's final opponent, the Golden Bears of West Virginia Tech, well, the best thing we can say about them is they all managed to get back home alive. With the regular season over, the racers began preparing for their second consecutive postseason appearance. The irony of drawing Western Illinois couldn't be missed. The severe beating the Leathernecks had given Murray two years ago had served as a catalyst for Coach Houston Nutt. He used that game 
to ignite the fire of intensity that made MSU a powerhouse in Division I AA. So on a rainy November 30th, the racers took the field to say thank you. The first half saw each team struggling to put together a drive, only to have it fizzle. It wasn't until Anthony Downs broke through the right side and galloped 45 yards did the nothing-to-nothing -nothing deadlock get broken. The Leathernecks pulled within one point in the third quarter when Murray opened the floodgates and scored 24 unanswered points in the final period. The victory allowed Murray State to do something they had never been able to do, continue to the next round of the playoffs. Against Troy State, they faced an opponent very similar to themselves, a strong core of recruited players supplemented by some big-time Division 1A transfers. Although the racers did not win that day, not one single senior hung his head in shame. What they'd been able to accomplish in the last four years was nothing short of a miracle. They had come to a team that was on the verge of collapse and turned it into a perennial power. In four years, they had a combined record of 31 wins and 16 losses, two OVC championships, and the first postseason victory in Murray State University history. These 17 seniors, Terry Anthony, Mike Cherry, Willie Corbin, Elliot Dunn, Renardo Hampton, William Hampton, Donald Hitson, Jesse Jones, David McCann, Carlos Ramsey, Tim Scarborough, Rule Shepherd. Dion Smith, Tony Turner, Anthony Hutch, and Matthias Bavo. The man who brought them here, head coach Houston Dale Nutt II, will long be remembered by racer fans as the man who saved Murray State football. And as far as those who questioned the racers at the beginning of the season, the answer is a resounding yes. They did have the intensity. They did have the drive. And they did have the desire.